Sports and supercar values have been declining since the summer of 2022. The market is down by 9.8% compared to last year. However, this is an average number and doesn't cover the extremities that we're currently seeing. Some cars lost up to 30%. In this video, we'll cover the cars that lost the most during last year and therefore aren't the most financially savvy purchases. But before we dive into the details, let's contextualize the current market situation. Lockdowns, economic uncertainty and government interventions resulted in surging demand and plummeting supply. Suddenly, investing in cars was no longer something for the elite. Cars were no longer traded at exclusive auctions. The increasing number of online auction platforms brought the supercar market into the homes of many. Inevitable, the scarcity level in the market increased, resulting in a playground for speculators where every purchase seemed destined for profit. Some cars increased by 50%. The growth rate was unprecedented. But beneath the surging prices, fractures started to emerge. In the first half of 2022, the tide shifted and the rules of the market changed. The market topped and the era of guaranteed profits came to an abrupt halt. It was bound to happen. The growth rate was unsustainable and eventually the invisible hand corrected the market. Cars were selling slower and slower, causing increasing inventory levels and speculators could no longer flip cars. It took however up until the summer of 2022 before the realization kicked in fully. What followed was something that we didn't see for a few years. Partially fueled by increasing interest rates, cars started to depreciate and they did so at above normal rates. The average rate for sports and supercars was 9.8% during last year. Let's dive into the data. Over here we have the US year over year price changes for almost all cars that feature on my channel. So what can we see here? On the horizontal axis we have the price change compared to last year in percentages. And on the vertical axis we have the number of cars to which this change applies. For example, 27 cars lost approximately 10 to 13%. Now looking at this plot, we can see that the average decline was 9.8% during the last year, but that most cars lost between 4.5 and 15%. However, we can see that there are also plenty of cars that fall outside this normal range, both on the right hand side and on the left hand side. Now as an owner or buyer, you most likely want to avoid the cars that lost more than 15%. So let's zoom into this market segment. We're not going to cover all cars in this segment, but just the ones which I think have the most interesting price developments. We start with the Jaguar F-Type. It seems that these cars can't catch a break. Over here we have the value development for the first generation 4 cylinders and V6s. And this shows that the V6s lost 18.9%, the V6s 22.4% and the 400 Sport 16.3%. The 4 cylinders lost only 14.2%. Now on average this is 18%. And this is on the high side, especially for the V6s. They tend to be from 2016 and are therefore relatively old. Now moving on to the V8s before the facelifts, we can see that the SVRs lost 18.1%, R's 16% and S's 22.1%. On average this is approximately 19%. And these numbers are way above the market average for cars with this age. The V8 S's are from 2014 and SVR's and R's from 2017. So what about the latest generation? You know, the ones with the sleek headlights? Well, it might not be as bad as you think. P40's are down by 10.2%, P380's by 12.5%, V8 R's by 15.2%, and the 4 cylinders by 19.4%. So on average they lost approximately 14.3%. Combining all the different models, we arrive at an average decrease of roughly 17% in the F-Type market. Translating this back to the market overview, we can see that this is indeed on the high side. Not excessive, but definitely higher than the market average. Now in this video, the focus is very much on cars that depreciated the most. Who doesn't like a dramatic video, right? Of course, some owners couldn't care less about the value development of their car, while others aim to minimize depreciation at every purchase. If you belong to the latter group or fall in between the two groups, pay attention. As you saw, there are cars that lost way less than the average or even increased in value. And some of them are being auctioned right now by Sotheby's Motorsport and could be yours. This 911 GT2 RS for example lost only 2.5% during last year and this well-optioned F12 only 3.9%. 
these numbers are way below the market average and simply represent a parallel downshift from otherwise stable trends. GT2 RSs and F12s aren't cheap and it can be a little bit nerve wracking to buy them through an online auction. It's only natural that you're worried about the risks that come with it. But Sotheby's Motorsport is different from other online auctions because they leverage their experience with in-person auctions to take all those worries away. So what does that mean for you as a bidder? First, third party inspections are the rule, not the exception. On the GT2 RS page you can find for example all shortcomings that are identified by the inspection. Second, their service doesn't stop after the bidding. They can assist you with transportation, financing and also help in case of remedies. So register as a bidder at Sotheby'sMotorsport.com and start bidding. Let's continue with the cars that have high depreciation rates. The next car on the list is the Maserati MC20. Looking at the price trend, we can see that prices have been decreasing linearly. Compared to last year, they're down by 23% and this equals a loss of $74,000. A significant drop that's more than double the market average and also a lot higher than the decrease in the F-Type market. But they're cars that lost even more. But to find them we need to move to a slightly different segment. Moving away from the sports and supercars, we arrive at the Porsche Panameras and the AMG GTs. Starting with the latest generation Panameras, we can see that turbo S's are down by 14%, normal turbos by 16.1%, S's by 16.2% and GTS's by a whopping 23%. And especially the GTS sticks out here, whereas they normally represent excellent value. Also, the previous generation continues to slide. Looking at the 970 facelifted S and GTS models, we can see that GTS's are down by 21.6% and S's by 23.4%. The absolute numbers sit between 11 and $13,000. And this is again a bit more manageable than for the latest generation. Now the four-door AMG GTs fall of course in the same category as the Panameras. Big, luxurious, powerful cars. Depreciation rates are then also in the same ballpark. Over here we can see the trends for the 63 base and S, 53 and 43 models. Compared to last year, the 63 S is down by 22.7%, the base version by 19.2%, the 53 by 21.9% and the 43 by 19%. And this latter number is adjusted to account for the new cars that entered the market. Now all of this means that the AMG GT market declined by an average rate of 20.7%. A significant sum, especially if you look at it in absolute terms. For the 63 S this is for example $34,000. Now moving away from the family cars, we arrive at the V8 Vantage, the 4 liter one to be precise. Correcting for the inflow of new cars, the V8 Vantage lost 17%. Again quite high compared to the market average of 9.8%. There are however a few interesting developments in the Vantage market that can save you a pretty penny. Buyers, this is the time to pay attention. After their first year, the depreciation curve flattened significantly. New Vantages lost 20% during last year, while this was 14.9% for 2019 and 2020 cars. Second, you can really get some excellent deals on them during the winter, around February. The cars that were listed for sale for more than 3 months were discounted by an average rate of 8%. That's half of the depreciation rate that you save. Moreover, it applies to a large share of the market, as these cars tend to sit for a while in the showroom during winter. So if you want the V Advantage and plan to have it for a while, it could pay off to buy it during the winter more so than for other supercars. Now on a completely unrelated note, spy shots of the updated V Advantage are circulating and it seems that Aston Martin will fix the front and the interior. If they manage to catch some of the timelessness of the first generation, I think it could well be the most beautiful car in its class. Pricing wise it will probably be priced too high, resulting in an equally high depreciation rate. But we know that's the way Aston Martin rolls. And with that we arrive at one of the quickest depreciating cars that ever featured on my channel. The numbers are out of this world. Is it a coincidence that it's an electrical car? You tell me. Over here we have the price trends in the Taycan market and we can see that prices plummeted. S's are down by 27.2%, GTS's by 15.8%, Turbo's by 30.3% and Turbo S's by 27.3%. And these are just insane numbers. 
in relative terms, but also in absolute terms. If you own a Turbo S, you're looking at a drop of roughly $50,000. Unsurprisingly, we can see that discount rates on unsold cars are increasing. GTS is sit at 7%, but the Turbo family gets discounted by an average rate of 9% if they're not sold within 3 months. Alright, we saw now that F-Types, MC20s, Panameras, 4-door AMG GTs and Taycans all lost more than the market average. In some cases they even lost a multiple of the average. But there's of course a vast grey area between the average and the extremes that we just covered. I had a look at that area and picked some examples which I thought were interesting to share. Let's have a look at the data. The Ferrari 812 GTS is for example down by 15.4% or $112,000. A loss that is higher than what we are seeing in the mid-engine segment. But also first and second generation i8s are dropping by 15 and 14% respectively, after the price trend flattened a bit last year. Underlying though, we can see that discounts are decreasing rapidly, something that could indicate that the trend will flatten in the future. Even base Euruses are decreasing. Prices for these were more stable than Toyota Camry sales in the zeros, but depreciation finally kicked in. Last year they lost on average 15.3% or $46,000. Still less though than a Taycan Turbo S. Naturally, also CAs continued their downward path, as values decreased by 13.2% in the coupe market and 14.3% in the convertible market. Yet, in the grand scheme of things, the trend appears to be flattening slightly. Potentially, price hikes supported the used market. Going back to Italy, we can see that also Romas are finding their way down. They decreased by an average rate of 15.6% during last year. And as far as I'm aware, some Romas were part of the Peru Sangre deals. And this could explain the high depreciation rate to some extent. And on that note, let's wrap up the video. If you care about the value of your car, all of the previous named models aren't the best choice at the moment. They're all dropping quicker than the market average. It of course doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy them. These cars have intangible values that can outweigh any depreciation rate, no matter the height. Only you can decide what weighs heavier in your decision. Sure, a V Advantage depreciated much quicker than a 911, but the V Advantage has something that the 911 fails to capture. I think you know what I mean, right? The aim of this video and of all the other videos for that matter is then also to provide you with the numbers so that they can assist you in your own decision making process. Now if you want even more information on the depreciation trends that you saw in this video or on depreciation trends of other cars, head over to my channel. Over there you'll find market analysis for a large variety of cars. Can't find the car you're looking for? Let me know the name of the car by commenting it down below in the comment section. Once there are enough requests for a certain car, I'll make a video about it. As always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week for a new video.